Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. The annual Mizzou Caravan brought Tigers of many a different sport and different sort tonight to America's hometown for a meet and greet with their fans. A group that included a homegrown Missouri women's basketball standout from just across the Mississippi. Just getting the opportunity to see all the people that come and support us and um, especially here with me and all the people that I might know. And I think it's just a lot of fun um, getting to know them and putting a face to the people that come and support Mizzou. I was going from Q&D and then going down to Mizzou and just bringing that, you know, everything you learned to Q&D, that family atmosphere and just the way you played there, going down to Mizzou and, and taking your talents down there. And, and how is it to, to be able to hit, you know, be somewhat close so your family can go watch too? Um, well, it's definitely important to me, my family coming and watching. I mean, at first I wanted to go far away, but, you know, just being close is just awesome. And um, definitely a second family down there. Um, the coaching staff, is that's why I went there. And um, it's just been a great year. It's so fun getting to know all the girls. And um, I just think that we have, um, like, a lot of potential ahead of us. And representing Tiger football tonight, fresh off a very successful spring, one of the rising young offensive linemen in the Southeastern Conference. A young man who spent a little time with our Will Wilson. We're here at the Hannibal Country Club for Mizzou Caravan, speaking with Mizzou offense lineman Evan Bame right here. Evan, tell me a little bit about the caravan and, and what you guys are doing. You know, the caravan is just going around and, and, and showing our love to the Mizzou faithful and and telling everybody how much we appreciate the support that they have from Mizzou, and, and not only for the, the football program, but for all the athletic programs and, and just the university itself. And, and it's just our way of, of student athletes giving back to the rest of the community. Let's talk about the 2014 team here a little bit. You guys have a lot of starters leaving, You're gonna have a lot of new faces, especially a quarterback. Tell me, what's your outlook, your assessment of this team coming to 2014? It, it's, it's an exciting team. It's a, it's a competitive team, and we, we saw that during spring ball, just competing back and forth against each other, and and, and that's that's what you want to see in spring ball, and when you see you against each other and seeing what we need to fix, where we need to improve on in the fall, and you know, there's there's a lot of stuff we still need to improve on, but we're excited of where we're at right now, and. You know, we go into the summer and we work hard this summer, get big, get stronger, get faster, and, and then we get to the fall camp and we just work hard just like we did last year. I think there's going to be a lot of exciting things to happen next fall, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit more. Speaking here with Mizzou offense alignment, Evan Bame, we're going to send it back in the studio from here over at the Hannibal Country Club. And thanks, Will. Great stuff tonight. By the way, speaking of football news, we have some of the local variety as well, Pittsfield. One of the worst kept secrets in the area has brought back Kurt Simonson to helm the PGP Saki program as confirmed to us tonight by his predecessor, Don Bigley. Now the Simonson hire has been told to me is modeled much like the Bill Reed hire back at Camp Point Central a few years back, allowing a veteran proven coach to perhaps groom his successor. Kurt previously coached between the early 1980s and 1990s and helped the Saki program to a run of seven playoff appearances over that stint. Got some scores to pass along tonight. Soccer Quincy Notre Dame opens up the Sacred Heart Griffin Tournament with a win over Rochester Cassidy Foley with the golden goal there. Hannibal big time soccer showdown tonight with Boonville down two to nothing. Just 20 minutes left of the ball game, but check out Mackenzie Morris with the perfectly curved corner restart to have the lead at that point for the Boonville Pirates. Unfortunately for the Hannibal Pirates, that was all they could muster tonight as they lose a tough game in conference and a biggie tonight. Final count in this one was 2-1. to one. On the diamond today, and we did actually have some diamond action before the rain fell. Grigsville Perry continues to steamroll all comers in five innings tonight. Kendall Hannett doing it all for the Tornadoes as they take down South Fulton 13-1. Route just a buzzsaw tonight at the expense of a West Central team that had been playing really good baseball of late. Ryan Bickhouse, have a night, young man. Home run and seven ribbies in that ball game. And Knoxville overpowers Bushnell tonight, 10 to nothing. Your final there. Also in softball, another big day for Grigsville Perry. Another big day for Hannah DeWitt, who had a no hitter and three ribbies to the cause in a victory. West Prairie, too much for Rova tonight. And Liberty hangs on to beat Western behind the pitching efforts of Adrian Seavers. Speaking of pitching tonight, we've got the John Wood Trailblazers taking on. Lincoln auspicious start in this game for Rachel Motley leaving the Lincoln batters frozen right there. Do you want to build a snowman? I'm not going to sing anymore. Sorry guys. Pick it up in the bottom of the first Sierra JQs. I think I finally pronounced that right after about 15 tries. 
Not phonetically how it sounds, but Jake Hughes can certainly hit the ball. RBI double there to make it one to nothing. Later, it's Bailey Couch doing the RBI rip thing, extending her team's lead out to three to nothing. Rachel Motley going to finish things up and finish things up nicely with the shutout on the day. They were scheduled to play two, only got one in before the rains fell, but John Wood wins it today. Four to nothing, your final. Finally, on the college docket tonight, Illinois College with a sweep cross town of McMurray Page Meyer out of Beardstown with a pair of ribbies in the first victory. And it was Elise Speckhart, the pride of Payson Seymour, with a three hit complete game shut shutout, I should say, in the second. Coming up tomorrow, we'll take a look at all the local influence that's making Truman State softball so darn good this season. And they've got great pitching and just great everything going for them this and season. And it's all from Palmyra or Klopp, <laughs> it seems like the way they're going. All right, we're looking forward to it, Chris. Thanks.